Hello everyone, the GMTK Game Jam 2023 organized by Mark Brown ended just 4 days ago. For those who don't know, this jam was an epic event where developers from all around the world came together to create games within 48 hours. First and foremost, Mark Brown's Game Jam was known for its unique and challenging theme. So let us take on a role that we don't normally get to play. Maybe that's Tetris, but instead of moving the blocks, you move the whole level. Participants had to test their creativity and skills by developing games with this theme. And in this video, I'm going to show you the best and most creative games that I tried. I must clarify that there were an impressive number of entries, over 6,800, and it's impossible for me to have played them all, because I want to make this video before the winners are announced. Maybe later I'll try the winners and share my opinion, but for now, these are the best games for this jam that I played. Wait, why am I saying I played? Well, I had a little help. Let me introduce you to my daughter. Hello! She also tried some games and will share her opinion. Without further ado, let's begin. The placement in this ranking does not indicate the quality of the game. We played many good puzzles, but there were two that truly stood out. The level of challenge and creativity in the first puzzle was excellent. Cat's Cradle You play as a cat that can transform into a monster. You reverse between pulling and pushing dogs. With your transformations to solve puzzles, your goal is to guide a dog to the portal. You can either call the dog or scare it. I gave this game 5 stars. I loved everything about it. The puzzle, music, art, mechanics. Everything is fantastic. Especially enjoy the feature of the music switching with your current form. The level design is great. The mechanics are fun and it's a unique take on the theme. The game is really well polished and overall it's great stuff. It has a charm and style. And the gameplay is well done. As regards game art, I mean how well does the game utilize its visual style, a game that's outstanding is Billy the Worm, a game where you play as a worm bait trying to survive from the fish. It features a charming aesthetic, great pixel art, sound and music. The atmosphere is captivating and while there are many beautiful games in terms of art, I personally found this one particularly enjoyable. Mia the Mimic is a super fun game in which you become what you interact with. I love how you can transform into different animals by touching them. The art is amazing and I was amazed by all the little details. It's hard to believe they made it in just 48 hours. The platforming is great and it's the best platformer I played in the whole jam. The cute art style and short dialogue scenes were awesome. And I had a blast trying out all the different animals' abilities. Overall, it's a fantastic game that's both fun to play and visually impressive. Four. Carrot Bazooka is an entertaining game where you play as a horse and rebel against your farmer overlords in an endless survival challenge. Unlike many other games focused on farming, this game flips the script and centers around the destruction of crops. I had a great time playing this game. One aspect I really enjoyed was the need to avoid farmers as if they were zombies from The Walking Dead. They never got tired. Some of them even started shooting at you. The gameplay revolves around eating corn and then entering a van to exchange points for upgrades like increased speed or a shield. Problem is that the barn isn't open all the time. Alternatively, you can purchase berries to enter a field where eating them rewards you with more points than corn, requiring strategic decision making. Overall, I like this game, however, I wasn't able to acquire the carrot bazooka since it required a significant number of points and the farmer managed to catch me. Five. The night I went to the convenience store won a lottery but got kidnapped by an alien then started to escape or die. Oh, that's a long name for a game. 
In this game, the main character was kidnapped by a group of two-dimensional creatures who lives in two kinds of gravity. The place is special, it changes gravity every period of three seconds. The main character will try to escape using a combination of intelligence and coordination, creating a new road when gravity changes. To escape you need to get the key in each level to open a door. The role's reverse theme here occurs by switching between a platformer game view and a third-person overlook view. Some elements are changing their role, from being a block to being an enemy or a pickup item can become a damager, etc. The game is very interesting, however the intro text at the start was extremely fast and I couldn't read it. I wish I could read it at my own pace. I had a lot of fun once I understood the mechanics. It took me a while to understand the fact that platforms turn into monsters in the second mode, but the concept is very smart and led to interesting gameplay. Congratulations to its developers! Six. Pause to play. This is a puzzle game where the role of the pause menu is reversed. It is a creative spin on the theme. The role of the pause menu is traditionally to stop the game so you can do whatever you want. However, the creator of this game reversed the role of the pause menu so that you must use it in a creative way to reach your goal. It's a really enjoyable experience. The first three levels are quite simple and teach you how to play the game. In level 4, you have to think outside the box because the player is not visible on the screen. I won't tell you how to solve it. Many people think it should definitely be released after the jam as a complete game, with more levels and mechanics. 7. I Overscope is a game that puts players in the shoes of a developer, tasked with finishing their own game by solving coding puzzles and designing sprites, including the ability to create their own enemy. The puzzles in the game struck a good balance, offering a challenge without being too easy or too difficult. The humor in the game was on point, adding an enjoyable touch. The inclusion of drawing your own sprite was a genius idea allowing to create self-expression within the game. The execution of the game was fantastic and the voice acting was a very nice touch. The puzzles were clever and the no, sense of satisfaction when everything came stopped. together was immense. I truly hope that I Over Scout receive an expanded release in the future as it has the potential to capture the interest of many players. It strikes the perfect balance between puzzling elements right and being a great game that okay, fosters self-expression. Making the game. Making the game is another game where the roles of player and developer are reversed. This time, you choose what you add to the game. This makes things pretty interesting. You can add a poison swamp, a pop-up giving you a free toaster that blocks your vision, a ghost enemy that chases you, a sawblade that kills you. You can also increase your verticality and many other things. I love the variability in the difficulty. You can create a new game each time. The game is simple, but funny. And this game could easily be expanded into a full game. Congratulations! Nine. Pharaoh Demon is a game where you play as a vengeful demon seeking revenge on a kingdom. In a unique twist, you take on the role of what would typically be the enemy of Kiru. As a powerful black demon, your objective is to destroy the kingdom and ultimately face off against the king in the castle. The demon character is formidable, possessing abilities such as dashing, spellcasting and generating spikes that damage knights, grass and everything in its path. The mechanics of the game are smooth, adding to the overall gameplay experience. Visually, Pharaoh Demon is fantastic, the developer Michael's Game Lab deserves all the goodies for creating such a beautiful game with such a short time. Not only it's visually impressive, but it's also highly entertaining to play. Great job all around! Well, I personally want to say that Pharaoh Demon and Cat's Cradle were my favorite games in the jam. It's my opinion. Tell me in your comments which one you liked. Other notable thing to mention is that in this jam there were games that stood out with great storytelling, such as Waka Waka The Truth Behind Pac-Man. 
In this game you play as the ghost instead of Pac-Man, offering a fresh perspective. One notable aspect of the game is the cute and well-developed plot, which is evident from the engaging intro cinematic. Look at this intro! The Rolls Rebirth theme in this game jam took creativity to new heights, with some games exploring unusual perspectives. One standout example was I am the final boss. In this game, instead of being the typical player, you get to play as the boss of a dungeon, having powerful attacks and abilities far beyond those of the weak knights you face. In this game, you can crush, claw and even put up barriers to defend yourself. The boss character feels weighty and slow, and their attacks have a satisfying impact. Playing as this huge monster truly gives you the sensation of being in control of formidable force. However, one small drawback was that the game's intro was too fast, making it difficult to read everything. In this game jam, many developers took classic games like Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Frogger and Super Mario and added unique twists to them. Playing as the asteroids attacking the planet was one of the games that I thought it was going to be original and it wasn't. Many people did the same thing, uh, but I want to speak about my game here. Then, for example, a cargo ship trying to survive in a galactic battle or controlling the vehicles in Frogger brings fresh and exciting gameplay experiences. Similarly, taking on the role of the zombies in Plants vs Zombies or playing as Goombas to beat Mario and Peach and rescue Bowser adds a fun twist to a familiar narrative. It is also interesting to see games with modern themes such as a cookie trying to avoid clicks or a game where you need to solve captures for survival. These innovative concepts bring a contemporary touch to the gaming experience. I'd like to showcase two games that completely overturned the traditional Princess Rescue concept. You know, princesses awaiting their heroes. Well, in these games, things take a different turn. They parody the classic notion of princesses in distress. In these games, players assume the role of the princess, who attacks the knights and defends the dragon. These defense-oriented games offer a unique twist on the genre. In Not Another Hero, you don't have to let the hero save you, throwing pots on them. Players can choose to either roll barrels or pots down the stairs or directly aim for the knight's head. In the second game, Rescue Another Princess, players can activate traps, curve frying pans and gather roses as they progress. One particularly awesome moment occurs when the colossal dragon breathes fire from its mouth. Finally, the art style and music of these games are really Of course, these are just some of the games that we played out of the many brilliant games that emerged from Marx Brown's Game Jam. The developer community showcased their talent and dedication by surprising players with new ideas and innovative approaches. The games that came out of this jam showed that creativity and imagination has no limits. Congratulations to all the participants and thank you Mark Brown for organizing this incredible experience. I'm excited for what the next game jam has in store. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to stay updated with new videos. Videos. Until next time, tell us in the comments below what game was your favorite or what great game we didn't play. Bye!